Okay, everybody, Stephen Key here today, and we have a very special topic. It's about creativity and why it's so important. So you guys, during this video, we're gonna talk all about why it's important to be creative and give you some tools and strategies. So please, stay tuned. Bob, thank you for coming on InventRight TV. Stephen, pleasure to be with you. Now, I know how important it is to be creative because I've been a creative guy my whole life and have had a blast doing it. But please tell all of us about what do you do and why you think creativity is so important in today's world. Well, our company does really, we have two focuses. One, um, we create strategies that help companies increase sales, decrease customer acquisition costs, um, but the other thing is, is we teach creative thinking methods that help not just management, but the average person to get involved in helping companies come up with better ideas, better processes, um, and not just do things the exact same way they always have done. So that's, uh, and it's so critically important. And I think more and more, I think smaller companies recognize this already, right? Because they're hungry. But I think even larger companies are starting to recognize how crucial that is. No, I agree. I think today to be competitive, you need to be creative. My mission is to get people in the world to realize that they are creative and that they have not given themselves enough credit for actually having that innate ability. You know, we're, we're all born with it. And it, it, unfortunately, it, it kind of gets trained out of us. Uh, or if not trained out per se, Stephen, it's it's not fostered and encouraged. The way I think, I, I especially in the modern world, it's it, with the advent of AI and all sorts of other automation, it, if you don't learn to do that, think more creatively okay you're going to struggle in the modern world so okay so creativity is important and we all have it so why is it why why is it important because uh, I, let me tell you a very dangerous word routine hmm. It used to be, if you had the right knowledge and you had your routines down, you could make a living. You might even make a pretty good living. But anymore, that routine stuff is mm. being done by machines. And, and that, that okay. the pace of that change is accelerating. And so now you can look at that as a good thing or a bad thing. I actually look at it as a good thing. And I'll tell you why. When technology takes somebody's job, it's terrible temporarily. Okay. But what it does is it frees them up to learn some new skills and do a different sort of work. It's like when these factories closed down in the U.S. and this manufacturing went to other countries. Okay. Those people that worked in the factories thought, you know, this isn't fair. It's terrible. You know, what am I going to do to make a living? But over time, those people got retrained in some other skills. And now they're doing work that they probably enjoy more. Okay. It adds more value to other people. And, and because of that, they probably make more money. All right. So it is, it is an essential skill set in the 21st century. And, and, but most people have not been trained on how to be purposeful on thinking creatively. It's not just, you know, everybody has a random aha moment. Okay. But most people have not been trained on purposefully being creative. Uh, let's talk about that for a minute. Because I love what you're saying. If um, I learned early on in my career that if I was going to make a living being creative, I had to exercise this muscle. I had to have tools. I had to develop skills so I could be creative, not just not that moment of inspiration. I had to call upon it every single day and everything I, everything I was doing to be creative 
to come up with those ideas. So I learned that, right? And I don't think I had, I, I don't think I was creative early on as a young man, but I learned those skills. So what are you telling us? How do we do that? I, I know how I did it, but what are you stressing to other people to teach them how to be more creative? Well, I would say whatever you have found, if you have found a system that works for you, then you need to stick with it. Okay. I'm not saying you don't ever need to branch out, but like for you, you know, you found a system that works for you that serves what you want to do okay. with that part of your life. And for me, up until probably, I'm trying to think of what year it was, um, early 2010, maybe a little bit before that, I actually did not think that I was a creative person. I, mean, this is, I tell people this and they laugh at me. They're like, what? Like they'll read my newsletter on LinkedIn. They'll read some of the articles I write for various publications. It's like, how do you come up with this stuff? Right? Like you're so creative. And yet for a lot of my adult life, I didn't think I was creative. And do you mind if I share with you why I think that is? Please. So, I think in formalized school, we're trained that there's one answer. There's one right answer. That's right. Okay. And why is that the right answer? Because that's the one on the test, All right. right? And there, and so don't be thinking about it any other way. But uh, the other thing is, I think people think, when they think the word creativity, in their mind, they're thinking artistic creativity. Okay. And if they don't see themselves as an artist, then they don't think they're creative. And I still recall, hmm. this is a long time ago now, but I was in the seventh grade, so I'm 12 years old. They were trying to teach us to write calligraphy. And I love calligraphy, I think it's beautiful, but no matter how hard I tried, even with a little bit of extra instruction from my seventh grade art teacher, I could not make those letters look right. And it frustrated me. And I remember thinking at that moment, I'm not an artist, which in my mind, I equated to I'm not creative. But I discovered there are creative thinking methods okay. that you can use. Human beings are creatures of habit. That's true in almost everything we do, and it serves us. I mean, imagine, Stephen, if we had to consciously think about everything we ever did. I mean, when's the last time you consciously thought about tying your shoes? Yeah. Once you know how to do it, your, your subconscious takes over, and you don't have to consciously think about that anymore. So you don't have to expend any energy on it. But our thinking, especially thinking about solving problems, is the same way. Um, and we think we're thinking hard about things, but it's like driving a hundred miles an hour on a circular freeway. We're thinking, 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 we end up with the exact same solutions. If, if there's any improvement at all, it's very marginal. And okay. so what I have found is that creative thinking methods, and I write about this in some of the, the things that I write, uh, different articles I write help you take an off ramp hmm. off that circular freeway yeah. Yeah. and go explore new territory. Hmm. Think about things in ways you've never thought about them before and see things. I call it seeing the invisible. Let's talk about this for just a minute. You're saying to all of us that, and I do believe this, that today to be competitive, you, you need to be inventive, right? And, it, I think it's going to help you in all parts of your life. I don't care what you do, maybe problem solving at work or maybe just overcoming some of the things that are obstacles in front of your life and you need to find other ways to get around them. And even today, it's even more important to be inventive. But all of us don't feel like we are. We don't feel like we're artists. Like you said, I think that's a, that's a great story because I think all of us feel like, hey, I'm not an artist, so I'm not creative. So what are you doing that can help people become more creative. What are some of the things, how can people follow you? How can they follow your philosophy? Because I know you're having a big impact on helping people be more creative. Tell us a little bit about how people can connect with you. 
Well, they can reach out to me via LinkedIn is probably the best way. Um, they can certainly, uh, you know, find our website, uh, spearpointonline.com. Okay. And, uh, you know, there are various resources there. Um, you know, when we go in and do corporate training, we'll train people. And, you know, the, the cool hmm. thing that we did that I think is a little bit different maybe than some other people that train in this area is uh, we gamify it. Yeah, you know, I, I invented a creative thinking game several years ago called What's the Big Idea? Okay. And, and so people compete in a friendly way to come up with the good ideas using the methods that we teach. Um, and in some instances, in fact, I was with uh, uh, Don Skaggs group out of uh, Kentucky the other day, and we were teaching them a method of coming up with bad ideas. That, <laughs> that's a lot of fun. Uh, the cool thing about that is, Stephen, though, is what I found is when you come up with, you purposefully come up with the worst possible ideas you can think of, yeah. almost invariably, if you'll come up with a set of 10, there's one in there that's a gem. It might need a little polishing, but it's a gem. But, you know what's really incredible? I like that you said that because I do believe that process and you just, by coming up with bad ideas, you took that fear away, kind of. And if you can come up with bad ideas, every once in a while something brilliant pops up. I know what you're talking about there because it's that act of looking at things differently and go, wow, that's a bad idea, but something else happened. I, I thought of something else and there's some brilliance there, but you took away the stress of like, hey, I've got to come up with good ideas by coming up with bad ideas. I think that's brilliant. Right. Yeah, it, it removes all the pressure, but you know what? The same process of turning on those creative juices, you've got to do that to come up with bad ideas, yeah. right? Yeah. And so okay. if, there's no, if there's no pressure, um, it just it, it opens up a, a stress free mind works tremendously better. So you're so let's talk about teaching corporate America how to be more inventive. <laughs> <laughs> That's a challenge. It is, isn't it? It really is because they've got systems in place that may have worked for them for years. It might even be, it might even be decades. Okay. And so the the especially larger companies right. and by the way this is one of the reasons that we have a tendency to work with small and mid-sized companies larger companies are very entrenched they're very entrenched in, in their way of doing things right. and you get too far off of that you've got a lot of people that are so leery mm. of breaking the status quo mm. you know one of my least favorite phrases of all time is, well, this is the way we've always done it. I, I, that's, that's a death knell in today's world. How do you instill trust when you're dealing with people that maybe they don't even trust themselves? They don't trust their company they're working for, or their, maybe their, their associates. How do, you, how do you instill some trust so they can open up to be creative without just the hammer coming down and then saying, look, you know, um, that's not the way it's done. <laughs> well, uh, there are a few different programs that we have in place right. that will. Eh, what I found is there are three huge barriers to opening to decision makers within a company, opening themselves up to new ideas. Um, one is um, you get. You get a supervisor. If I'm a line level person, the chances that I come up with an idea and I get to present it to somebody who can make a decision, take an action on it, pretty remote. If it's any sizable company at all, okay. there's a level or two of authority in between. All right. Dishonest manager. Hmm. And I recognize a good idea. When that idea gets presented, guess whose idea it is? It is. It's his. You're... And the first time that happens, that's the last time you get any good ideas. Got it. And the the second hurdle, hmm. big barrier to that happening within a company is you get personality conflicts. Oh. You get more than a few people together. This person just doesn't like this person, and that they know 
Mm -hmm. If I don't like you, Stephen, and I know this is your idea, it never gets a fair hearing. Mm -hmm. Right. And the other thing is, is, is people, this is probably the biggest one is people are afraid of being judged. So what we're working on right now is implementing a one, it's a recognition and rewards program. And two, the idea is that people come up with while they're um, working either with us or using our methods, they're submitted to us as a, as a neutral third party. Oh. And we submit them to a decision maker with no name attached. <laughs> So, so we eliminate those, okay. those levels of potential dishonesty um, and we eliminate personality conflicts so that these things get a fair hearing. So, but what's the difference from working in that environment than working from an independent inventor or someone that wants to be inventive for a living? Because they sound like they're in two very different worlds. How, how do you bring them together? What are the similarities and what are the differences? Well, I would say... One, the process is the same, Okay. you know, it, because creative thinking methods are designed to do one thing, open up your mind to new possibilities. And so whether I'm working to create a new product, you know, I might work with uh, one of my uh, kind of go to when I'm thinking about product. Uh, I've got a, a, a method. I didn't invent this, but uh, it's a method called uh, magnify. And there's a one, another one called Minify. Hmm. And so, you know, I'll, I'll take and look at those and go, you know, how can we either dramatically up the scale or how can we miniaturize the scale? And those, that method right there um, was responsible for creating, I don't know if they specifically use that, but think about this. Think about Poly Pockets. Think about Micro Machines. Yeah. Uh, you're right. I love it. Uh, and, and, and in the Magnify, back in uh, 2017, to celebrate the 40th anniversary of the release of Natural Light, Anheuser-Busch produced, get this, a 77-pack of Natural Light. <laughs> now, that's, you know, Seth Godin in his talk about how to get your ideas to spread uh, said, you know, your ideas have to be remarkable. Well, that just doesn't mean neat. That means worth remarking on, right? Well, a 77 pack of beer is worth remarking on, right? It's not something you see every day. And so, you know, the, I, I use those kinds of methods when I'm creating strategies for companies. I okay. teach them so that they can do the same thing internally. But if I'm inventing a product, I would use the same kind of methods, mm. right? Um, because it helps you to look at it. Um, and I love, I love I, frankly, Stephen, I would love to merge that with what you call inventing for the market, mm -hmm. right? So, because I, I, I love your method of inventing for the market. Yeah. I think that's the smartest way to go about it. Now, you know, it's really interesting that you mentioned micro machines because Galoo did that years ago. And I remember that just making things small and how how big that became um, a product. And that's a, that's a very interesting way of looking at things. And from my creativity, I've always played games and that's a great game to, to play. Um, so how can, talk about your newsletter for a minute, because I know that's very, very popular. And right. explain to me why you've got a great audience on LinkedIn. You've got a, a great following on LinkedIn and they really love your newsletters. So what is it about is there a strategy when you write that? How are you connecting with an audience that um, that's that's feeling value in your newsletter? How are you doing that? Well, something I, I try to do is I try to make the newsletter unpredictable, hmm. right? Because there's a wide range. It's like at the risk of sounding like Forrest Gump, it's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get week to week. Hmm. You know, it might be a business okay. strategy for a restaurant. It might be, okay. how do we build market share? The one I shared today was an idea to make um, immunizations more kid-friendly. Hmm. So, you know, it's a wide range of things, and I, I, I try to keep it fresh like that for, for two reasons. Okay. One, you know, I want it to be interesting for the audience. I want it to be engaging. 
And two, you know, I like to demonstrate that I'm not a one trick pony. Hmm. Right? So okay. as a what your industry is, you know, I can a- apply my, what I call key. Well, it's not K E Y Stephen. it's K E I it's knowledge, experience, and imagination to coming up with better ideas. I love so, it. yeah. And that's, and, and people, I mean, as you're aware, you know, it gets lots of traction, lots of views, lots of comments, lots of shares. And, uh, so yeah. And, I, and look, I love doing it. And that's the, uh, that's probably may, maybe the most important part. No, I, I love what you're doing. And I want to tell everybody, look, if, if you think you're creative and you have a process, that's fantastic, but there's always new things you can learn of how to look at things a little bit differently, how to up your game. But I do believe what you said today, more than ever, you need to embrace this inventiveness. And if you don't think you're an inventor, or maybe you're not a painter, maybe you don't sculpt, or maybe you don't do those traditional things that you identify with being someone that's creative, we're all creative. And we can all come up with ways to solve problems, maybe in our business, maybe in our daily life. But we just haven't really thought about it or developed those tools. But I'm really glad you're bringing that out because I do believe we're all creative. We just, maybe somewhere down the line, that teacher said, you're an artist, you're not. I, I, that's the way I see it. Somehow that happened early on. And I, I think um, in order to to uh, be uh, a little bit more productive in today's world, you need to tap into that creativity. That's what I think. Well, that skill set of thinking creatively is consistently ranked at or near the top of skill sets that CEOs say are the most important thing they're looking for. Now, wait a minute, let's talk about that because I, I've been reading about that recently. In fact, I've been reading about that now for quite a while. But typically you wouldn't think that would be on a, on a resume, right? Or something you should highlight. But how important is that today versus all the other skills of having that cr- creativity to, to problem solve? How important is that? Uh, other than effectively relating to people, I think it's the top one. Now, it doesn't do you a, all the creativity in the world if you can't relate to people and you can't do that effectively. I'm not sure it's going to help you that much. Okay. But besides effectively relating and communicating with people, hmm. which is leadership, really, uh, I think it's uh, I think it's near the top. In fact, hmm. I, I really despise the term soft skills. Why? I, I despise it because it sound it almost makes it feel unimportant. <laughs> it's really important. Yeah, it's hugely important. I mean, hard skills I... are transient, right? <laughs> Soft skills are permanent. I love you know, it's funny you said that because what what we try to teach on Invent Right are the little things behind this process that you need to do. And it's all about communicating, it's all, all about um, listening. It's about um, all those little things that add up to the big picture. And you're right, I call them soft skills, but they're really important skills. They're, they're like, they're probably the most important part of it. Right? Um, wow. Where do you live? Where am I Ohio. Call- Ohio, Southwestern Ohio. Okay. All right, we're going to put a lot of information down below. If you want to contact Bob, you want to follow him. He's got great content. I do believe today, in today's world, you have to be more creative. So thank you for coming on InventRight TV, Bob, and thank you for sharing all the tips and strategies and how important it is today to be creative. Thank you so much. Stephen, pleasure to be with you. 